Warning, this video contains spoilers, so if you haven't read the book, you might not want to watch this video. Halo, The Thursday War. It's the sequel to Halo Glasslands, written by Karen Travis. Uh, the book was released October 2nd, 2012, all across the USA. You can find it in your bookstore, you could order it online. Unfortunately, in Canada, you could not find this book in bookstores or anything. You would have to order it online. So it was very unfortunate, and I don't know when I'm going to upload this, but when I do, that means it's finally released in bookstores. Gosh, who was in charge of distributing these books? Because I don't know about you, but uh, I want my Halo books on day one. So right now I'm just filming this with the Halo Glasslands book in my hand, but what you guys are seeing is the Halo uh, Thursday War book in my hand. Ah yes, the power of editing. So anyways, here's the cover here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice cover, I guess. Um, we see the, I believe that's the infinity in the background there. Uh, and the planet is Sanghelios, if I'm not mistaken. The planet, the home of the elites. And is that a Spartan or is that an ODST? I have no idea. So at this time that I'm recording the video, I am done only half the book, so the first eight chapters. Uh, but no worries, once we get like halfway into this video, I'll be filming once again and I'll be completed the whole book. So anyways, uh, this book uh, starts off where we left off in the first book. Uh, where there's an explosion on Sanghelios and Phillips loses contact with the uh, Oni, Kilo 5 I guess, that's the team's name. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Each chapter um, revol has about two or three storylines I believe, just like the first book. So one storyline is Philip and his exploration in the Sanghelio temples. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't call it Sanghelio temples, but the Forerunner temples. And it's sort of similar to the uh, first book where that one Spartan was lost in the Dyson Sphere and like exploring Forerunner architecture. So it's really interesting. I really like that storyline. Another storyline revolves around the Elite's wife who... The Elite who got kidnapped or captured in the first book. So her wife is like worried... His wife is worried like, hey, where's my husband? And it's interesting learning about the female Elites and their role in society. So uh, once the male is gone, they assume responsibility and take authority. They have to be brave and whatnot. And then we have... Um, well, we have some, I guess, moral issues in uh, Kilo 5 regarding Naomi and her father. Uh, that's an interesting topic. I really hope we go more into that later on in the book. But right now they're focused on trying to save Phillips. So one thing I like about these storylines when they end off, uh, sometimes they're a bit dramatic, or when the chapter ends, it's, sometimes it's a bit dramatic. So uh, one example is uh, Phillips, he's like in the ruins or in the temple, and he touches a button, and then something happens, and then he's like, oh no, I really hope I didn't prime a halo, and then the chapter ends. And <laughs> that kind of thing, I think that's cool. And then there's another instance too, where it's a bit of, there's some foreshadowing going on, and it goes along something like, all right, we have nothing to worry about unless the four runners come back from the dead. Hmm, Halo 4, anyone? <laughs> so yeah, that, that kind of thing, it definitely puts a smile to my face, makes you chuckle a bit. There are some instances where they talk about like old Halo history very briefly, or like places on Earth. So for example, Kilo 5 is in the Forerunner temples and they're worried that the elites might come and attack them, so uh, BB is like, no, they would never do that to a uh, temple that they find holy. Do you think there would ever be an attack on the Canterbury Cathedral or Mecca? And reading that, it gives me the impression that those places still exist on Earth at this time in the Halo universe. Pretty neat, I guess. And then uh, as for Halo history, uh, the, there, there are grunts in this book and uh, it's funny. They, they are against the elites and for good reason. I mean, they bring up a, a point about the old grunt and elite war, if I could call it that. I read that. I read about that war in the Halo Encyclopedia book, so when I read it in this book, it, it made me smile and laugh because uh, I've always wanted to hear more about it. and. It's pretty cool to hear a grunt's opinion about that incident. So, so far in the book, um, it's a mess in San Kelios. The brutes are traitors, and then the elites who want to assassinate the Arbiter are just, uh, they seem to be winning this war, and uh, the Arbiter seems to be in trouble. He's very disorganized and whatnot. It's not pretty, but it's what Oni wanted. They wanted to destabilize San Kelios, make sure the elites do not come and interfere with human life ever again in the near or far future, so uh, it's pretty sad. I hope the Arbiter survives, but we'll see. I'm gonna go back to reading and finishing this book now. 
All right, so I'm uh, finally finished reading the book, and it was a great book in my opinion. I really like this, just like I liked Halo Glasslands. I know the first book wasn't really well received by many fans because of the writing style and whatnot, or how the uh, Spartans were portrayed. Uh, I didn't really have an issue with it, but uh, but I guess for those people, um, there were no Spartans in this book, other than Naomi, of course. So I guess in a way, you could look forward to reading this one. Uh, that I wonder what happened to them. I don't even rem remember what happened to them at the end of book one. But uh, this was a really great book. I really enjoyed the storyline with uh, Jewel, the elite who was captured. Uh, Phillips' storyline was pretty awesome too during the first half of the book. I don't really like what's going on though in terms of what Oni is planning to do with the elites and whatnot, and you know the Arbiter's fate and everything like that. It's uh, it's pretty disturbing. I mean. If I was younger, I'd be like, I wish Master Chief would come and save the Arbiter, but, uh, I don't know, Master Chief is pretty much a puppet. He can't do anything in this situation, so, it's, it's, it's not really great in my opinion, and Oni are just, uh, really, really disturbing in my opinion with their ideas to, like, starve the elites and whatnot, I, I just, uh, that's really disturbing, and there's something else too I don't remember. If you do like Forerunner stuff, like information about it, uh, this is definitely a book you want to check out. Be sure to read Halo Glasslands, the first w book of this, uh, this trilogy, if you haven't, and Ghost of Onyx, which is a prequel to the book, so. Uh, it's definitely something you should uh, check out if you're a Halo fan and you're curious as to what's happening between Halo 3 and Halo 4, and it's uh, definitely a good read, as I said. That being said, there are also other books in the Halo franchise, like The Flood, First Strike, Fall of Reach, which is a classic, and then we have the other trilogy, Halo Cryptum and Halo Primordium. So yeah, lots of books. Uh, oh, even Halo Evolutions, and I have... There's also a couple of others that I don't have. Um, I believe at some point in this video I actually showed you a checklist of them. So yeah, definitely check out those books if you haven't. They're all great books to read. Also, I'd like to say that the uh, sequel to Halo Primordium is going to be called Halo Silentium, and I don't know what the release date is. I thought it was going to be January 2013th, but I think it might be delayed. Oh no, are they delaying it like the comic books? But, uh, no, actually. Speaking of comic books, actually, let's not speak about comic books. Uh, I, at the beginning of the video I said I would film this video once I got the actual copy in hand. Well, that never happened. I ended up ordering this from Amazon because even today I checked, uh, none of the bookstores in the, I don't want to say country, but in my province have it. Uh, some of, the, in some provinces though, some of the, uh, I guess, lesser known bookstores have it because they went ahead and ordered it from Amazon maybe? I don't know, but uh, turns out not only Canada, but some places in the UK and Australia, they haven't been able to find this book either, still, so that's really unfortunate. I don't know why they did that. Uh, I went ahead and purchased an ebook, so that was my very first ebook, so it was pretty cool, but I really hope I don't have any issues with Halo Silentium. So there's a lot of things in this book that I really want to talk about, but man, this video can be only so long, so be sure to leave a comment in the comment section about things you really liked about the book or you didn't like about the book, what were your favorite parts and whatnot, any good quotes, uh, make some theories, have some debates, you know, make that comment section alive because it's great reading that stuff and plus uh, it's great to discuss things. What I want to know is, are you guys on Oni's side or are you against Oni? Because it's pretty controversial when you think about it. If you like, yeah, if you think about it, it's controversial. I'm not on Oni's side, as you can tell throughout this whole video. I really hope they get what's coming to them, but at the same time, what's coming to them? I think nothing can stop them, unfortunately. So yeah, let me know all your thoughts and whatnot. Uh, be sure to check out this Halo 4 magazine that is in bookstores, I guess. I don't know, it has some great articles and whatnot. It has some pictures of all the books and comics, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me go there quickly. Some toys and whatnot. Yeah, look, all the pictures and movies and comics, all that good stuff. So yeah, everyone, thanks for watching, and uh, whoa, what's up with George?